welcome back guys uh, welcome to the another session of DNA from the beginning and we are talking about the different experiments that lead to the victory and the establishment of modern day biology and modern genetics now we are looking at the different experimental approaches and we have already seen four experiments in the last experiment again conducted by Gregor Johann Mendel we find that some factor is dominant over another factor. We have also seen that there is a factor that is responsible for transferring the genetic trait or properties from one generation to another generation, from the parent to the children. Now that factor uh, will be termed later as gene. We'll be listening to all these things. But that factor is having some important features. For example, that factor present in pairs instead of one. And among those pair, one is dominant over another. And all of these uh, concepts actually generated over the experiments conducted by Gregor Mendel. Now, in this experiment, which is the experiment number five, again conducted by Gregor Mendel, what, uh, what he did actually, the same type of experiment as he have done using all those pea plants. So again, let's say he took a pea plant, let's say, in this case, uh, a trait for the pea plant, for example, the trait is uh, the height, the height of the pea plant. Now, what he took here, the height as a tall and a short. These are the two things that he took: tall plant and a short plant. Now, he crossed the tall plant with the short plant, and in the generation one, because in the first generation we always termed it as the parent generation. And this will be the generation 1, the next one will be generation 2. So we look for uh, three generations from including the parent generation actually. So from the parent generation after this cross what he got, cross between a tall plant and a short plant, pure breed, what, what, what he got here, all of the plants found to be tall. All of the plants he found are tall. It's kind of shocking to him. Why is that happening? We have seen this earlier too. Now what he did out of curiosity, he took the two plants from this generation 1 and cross fertilized it or self fertilized it. So, so he take this tall plant, whatever tall is here with another tall from this generation 1 and he make a cross again. After this cross, he got the generation 2 and in generation 2, what he got, three of he got tall plants as well as short plants. Now, what he got here is a percentage value. 75% of the plants are tall, 25% of the plants are short. So this is how he conducted the experiment. These are the results that kind of puzzled Gregor Mendel over the years. But why is that happening? Once he conducted the experiment with a cross between a tall and short, and once got all tall plants, he thought that there somewhere the short character is gone right it's apparently gone right so he thought the factor that is responsible for the plant to be short is kind of lost during this cross but after the cross of self fertilization in the generation 1 and the result at generation 2 again he see he saw that the short plants start to arise that means the short characteristic or the short factor is not lost it was there but it is not expressing. So there is a matter of expression of the factor. So the factor is nothing not only presents there, it, not, it does not only have the different versions or varieties, but it varies in the expression. And the expression is very, very important because it changes the course, as you can see here. So this is the experimental result he got. And he has done this experiment over and over and over again, but all the time he's kind of find that uh, 3 to 1 ratio between the tall and short plants or 75% tall, 25% short like that, right? He wanted to find out. Now whatever we are looking at here is only the phenotypic expression, right? Because phenotypes mean whatever we can see from outside, we can see it tall, we can see it short, but we cannot look at the factor, which factor it is, what the factor is doing. So what he has done here, he wants to find out, we wanted to find out that what is going on inside during the factor level. So you, to find that, he used the mathematical equation, some maths, to find that out. And actually nowadays, 
Reginald Punnett is another scientist in that time he was another scientist he helped it he produced a beautiful technique a mathematical approach to find out the offspring and the percentage of offspring pretty easily after any kind of cross so on this case what we can start here we know that there is a factor that is responsible right and we also know that factor is having two versions two versions are there one is dominant one another one is recessive one right so let's imagine here we take the factor as the height of the plant and the factor two different factors the dominant is you know tall because tall is coming more in this response because you know in the generation one all of them are tall generation two maximum are the tall so by looking at this type of results we can tell the tall is dominant over short so the dominant factor will be in this case tall and the recessive factor here is short so what we can take here he took the mathematical signs to actually designate it so for example the tall he put that factor you know the factor let's say the factor is t for the dominant he put capital t right actually uh, these are the equations of Punnett actually for the short he put small t but what we know that all those factors are actually two they present in pairs right so for the dominant it will be capital T capital T and the short recessive it will be small t small t right so we are having pairs in it because we find that they actually present in pairs not singly so once we know so we can actually put these values here t capital t capital t for tall small t small t for short right now according to Punnett or according to their idea what was the idea we never know how this cross actually happened how the factors actually transferred to the next generation right we all know that this this is a father for example this is the father this was the this is the mother and they just transferred their factor to the next generation but how did they transfer factor we never know for understanding that let's make two hypotheses for this purpose so this is the experimental part and let's make the hypothesis part here so it's kind of yeah let me make it straight uh, again anyways so in this case let's imagine that we begin with capital T capital T it's small t small t right if this is the scenario and let's imagine that the factors all of the factors are coming from only one type of parent for example this is the father remember this is the mother so let's say all of the character is coming from the father right so let's say uh, this both of the capital T's are coming from father and ultimately ultimately we get capital T capital T in generation 1 and that's exactly what we've seen here in the experimental result because you know all of them are tall so in this case capital T capital T it is justified right now on the second hand if we take the self fertilization event that means we take both of them as capital T cross them with each other again the same principle that all of it coming from the father or mother for example coming from father or say mother we end up with all capital T capital T and all of them if they are capital T capital T they will be tall but in the experimental results we found 75% tall 25% short so this scenario cannot explain the experimental result right so if the factor is transferred by only one parent it does not it is not able to explain the experimental outcome of Mendel's right so for that reason let's assume the second hypothesis for the second part similarly if we imagine instead of the transferring of the factor both of the factors from one parent let's imagine now one factor is coming from one parent right instead of the whole pair of factor let's say father provides only capital T mother provides a, one small t so ultimately what we get here we get a capital T small t this is something now what kind of phenotype this will produce now remember as this 
have two different factor one capital T one small t we know capital T is dominant for tall and you know dominant will always suppress the activity of the recessive one so it will show tall character in the plant right and that's what we've seen here in the generation one all of them are tall and that is explained by this hypothesis till now so what we can write here neither only TT it will be capital T small t that is also designating the tall right now let's look at here and take the same thing and go for the generation 1 self fertilization and that will be capital T small t crossed with capital T small t now if this is the scenario if this is the scenario what is going to be the outcome and the outcome in this case remember one t one at a time is given by one parent so this t is from father this t is from mother capital T capital T this is one offspring this t is for father this small t is from mother which will be capital T small t another offspring this t so let, let me do another color this small t is from father capital T is from mother this is another offspring small t is from father small t is from mother it will be small t small t another offspring so what we found here so let me actually change the color in this in this course actually a little bit let's because just change the color for your identification so these are the, the offspring list what we found capital T capital D the phenotype definitely all of the dominant that means it will be tall right capital T small t in both the case remember they signify tall and small t small t definitely none of them are dominant so all of them are recessive that means short so this will give us short so what we've got here 3 is to 1 ratio so 75 percent of them are tall and we've got 25 percent short so this scenario explains the experimental outcome of Gregor Mendel that means we can say genetics follow some rule right this factor transfer from one parent to another parent follows some rule and that rule is if there is the, those factors present in pairs which are later called as genes so if genes present in pairs one of the gene is coming from father one of the gene is coming from mother right none both of them come from any other parent plan uh, I mean parent so for that reason we know one is from father one is from mother and that's the assumption of our fifth experiment and that is genetics follow some rules you know our genes which are also termed as factors follow some rules and what is the rule one from father one from mother that means one from each of the parents right so that's the assumption number five guys thank you